All right, here we are in Scratch. We're going to be making a quick little game today. Over here is our display window. This is where we see everything happening in our game. We have our little cat here. We can drag him around, but we're going to keep him in the center for now. So what kind of game are we making? Well, let's see. We're going to take the when flag clicked block by going to the events tab. And then we're going to go into motion, go to random position. Oh, well, this isn't a very fun game. You just kind of click and the cat goes somewhere. But what we need to do is click on the drop down here and go mouse pointer. Ugh, this still isn't right. The cat needs to follow our mouse pointer all the time. So to do that, we're going to go into control forever. And we're going to drag this underneath our when flag clicked. So it surrounds our go to mouse pointer. Now, the cat follows our mouse because this happens all the time. It just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating. So the cat will always go to our mouse pointer. Speaking of, let's give the cat a name. You can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it player. All right. So now that we have our player, we need something for the player to collect. How about an apple? So we're going to go into our choose a sprite and we're going to click on apple. Now we have a fresh apple in our scene. So once again, we're going to go over to the events when flag clicked and we're going to drag it in. And you remember last time, right? Do you remember how to get our forever loop? Well, if you don't, you click on control, drag out the block, put it under when flag clicked. All right. So the first thing that the apple needs to do is go to a random position every time the cat eats it. So let's, oh no, the apple's just going everywhere all the time. Well, this is because we didn't add a special block here called the if then statement. If whatever in here happens, then the apple's going to go to a random position. And that if is going to be our touching player. To get that block, you go into sensing and it's right up at the top. Then you click on it and press player. So now every time the player eats an apple, it moves to a different random spot. This is already pretty fun, but we definitely need a score counter. So let's go over to the side, click variables and let's right click. So click the right mouse button or the right side of your touchpad and press rename variable. Now you're going to call this variable score or whatever you want to call it. So now we're going to change the score by one every time the cat eats an apple. Wait a minute, we can't see our score. What are we going to do now? Uh, so I guess we have to show our score. So we're just going to click this little box next to the score and check right there. Score is 12 score is 12. That must have been our score from the previous round, but we want to reset our score every time we have a new round. So we're going to set the score to zero by dragging this block above our forever loop. Now, every time we click the flag, it's going to set our score to zero. Okay. So now we have a pretty fun game, but our scratch cat seems kind of dull, you know? It's not really doing anything interesting except following our mouse. What if it points towards our mouse so that it looks like it's walking towards it? So to do that, we're going to go click on player, go into our motion tab and drag point towards mouse pointer into our forever loop. But wait a minute, it isn't working. Nothing's changed. If you've come across this problem, this means that you have your blocks ordered the incorrect way. To fix this, just drag point towards mouse pointer above go to mouse pointer. And now it's following our mouse. Look at that. And maybe we want it to walk around too. To do that, we're going to go into our purple looks tab and drag the next costume block into our forever loop. So now it's walking. Look at that. If you want to make the walk cycle a little bit slower, all you need to do is click on the costumes tab, right click on both of the costumes, press duplicate. 
So now we have two versions of this costume and two versions of this costume. And now the scratch cat is walking a little bit slower. Great. Now that we have this, what do you want to add? Maybe you want to change up the sprites a little bit. To do that, just go into our costumes tab and click on choose another costume. Maybe you want to change the backdrop color. That's great. Just choose a color that you like, click on our square tool, and drag it in. And now the scratch cat is eating apples against a turquoise background. Maybe you want a sound effect every time you eat the apple. Go to the code tab, the sound area, and play sound chomp until done, which comes with the apple automatically. So now it chomps every time you collect it, which is great. You can add more sounds by going to the sounds tab and pressing choose another sound. Make sure your sound isn't too long, otherwise there's going to be a delay. You can find the link to my project in the description. You can remix it and do whatever you want.